and they're off. Five furlongs for the five runners in the opening Coolmore Stud Calix race, and it is Tourist, and in the centre is River Tiber, and between them is Clon McCash, tracked on settling down by I am Invictus and dropped in as Supersonic Man. It's Tourist the leader, three and a half furlongs to go, being followed by River Tiber. Blue and orange of the short prize favourite, and then Clon McCash. Up the inside is I am Invictus with the back marker Supersonic Man. Very few changes as they reach the halfway stage, and it's Tourist and Colin Keane just with the lead from River Tiber, who's pushed up on the outside by Ryan Moore to try and get on terms and gets a reminder too, followed by I am Invictus, and then Supersonic Man who relegates Clon McCash to be the back marker, racing inside the final furlong, and it is Tourist joined by River Tiber who's quickening up on the outside. And it is River Tiber and Ryan Moore going on close home to make it two out of two in the Coolmore Calix race. Second tourist, I'm Invictus third. Aidan hey, O'Brien has just seen River Tiber preserve his unbeaten record in the opening Coolmore Stud Calix race. Aidan, congratulations. Have you learned a bit more about this call today, do you think? Yeah, I think we did, uh, Gary. We were obviously uh, delighted that we did it looking at him. He was very green through the middle of the race and uh, Jerry's horse. Uh, um, Colin took him a very good strong pace and uh, obviously he won very easily on uh, very soft ground the last day so it would have been a big difference uh, coming from Nav and going straight into Ascot you could get into trouble because he mightn't have known uh, enough. Uh, he would have learnt a lot today, he, he's, obviously his quig, feet would have had to be much quicker today and that's what will happen in Ascot so uh, I'm delighted that uh, he, we came and we're delighted that it was a strong pace he had to follow. Dropping down in distance today, a much quicker ground. Would you feel him be after what you've seen there that you will step him up in distance next time, or could he stay at five? I, I think so. Like obviously that was Ryan's uh, initial reaction when we asked him five or six, and he said he'd prefer the Coventry. So uh, usually what happens is we worked them all together close to Ascot, and then the lads decide what they're going to do with them and what way. But that would be Ryan's uh, initial. Uh, opinion at the moment. I know you're still sifting through these youngsters eh, and, and in many ways getting to know them but on what they've done so far would he be pretty much top of the pile? Ah, he's smart. Uh, we ran a few horses that got beat early that we thought were nice and we gave them little breaks and they're on the way back but he is he was a smart horse. He was always showing loads, uh, doing his work very easy and always the little danger of horses that are working uh, with other horses and doing it easy as he is, they don't learn a lot. Um, but that's what was important about today, he learned a lot. And would you be confident he'll stretch out in distance further down the line? I think so, like obviously if he gets a, if he gets an Ascot 6, like he should usually have no problem getting a 7, and usually if they get 7 as a 2 year old, they could get a mile uh, as a 3 year old, and the wooden bastards are a little bit unusual that they show loads of speed, and, and they seem to be able to get a classic distance as well, which uh, makes him a very uh, desirable horse really. He coped really well with much better ground today, and I'm sure you're looking forward to getting the Antarctic back on nice ground here. Do you expect we'll see a different horse today? Yeah, we, it was the first day in Navin, and obviously we were starting them off, and we didn't want to give them too hard a time, but we think he has progressed loads from Navin. Um, the same thing, like it, he'll go to Ascot next, and, and it will be fast, quick ground, and he'll have to have fast feet. So, um, um, no, he's in good form, and we've been happy with him since. And a couple of other chances on today's card, unless in Broadhurst, how do you rate those? Yeah, unless has done everything very nice. Uh, I think she was beaten by a nice filly here the last day, and we're very happy with her sense, and we think that she is progressing. She's a fine big filly, and uh, Broadhurst uh, won very easily in Dundalk, and we think he's enough, a nice mark, but it is a mile, so we're going to learn plenty about him today. And Aidan, just before we let you go, just may maybe wanted to have a quick chat about the stayers. Emily Dickinson clearly didn't run a race at Leopardstown the other night. Has anything come to light? No, it was very slow pace, mm. um, and she, she, she's a filly that distance is no problem like she will get two and a half miles get three miles on the flat that's the way she is but she got left in front there and there was no pace and uh, like obviously Ryan wanted to, didn't want to give her too hard a time because obviously the, the Gold Cup is where she's going ideally we would have preferred something to lead and maybe we should have had something ourselves in there to lead her but uh, she came out of the race very well and uh, listen it was lovely uh, Yvonne wrote her this morning I was delighted with her um, she loved the distance and that's what she, that's when she really comes into her own but she'd also love to be uh, horses around her to help her you know rather than having to do it like obviously Ryan did 100% the right thing you could give her a hard time and make her do it um, but it mightn't be the right thing going forward for her. Um, so she enjoyed herself, came out of the race very well, and we're looking forward to asking with her. Broom obviously ran a good race over at York. I'm not sure there was any excuse for him, though. Do you feel the Philly is still your number one hope for the no, Ascot? Yeah, well, Ryan was very happy with him. Uh, he said it wasn't probably ideal the way the race was, and he was kind of left in there. He was kind of like he was making the running, which wasn't ideal for him, but that's the way it was. Um, we, we think... Uh, 
uh, he he's uh, he, he's cantered it as well since and uh, um, he's been very good and everything's fine so he's going to go to two and a half miles and we think that'll suit him but uh, obviously you're not sure until you go that distance uh, whether they'll really get it or not but that's the plan with him as well to go that way final final question I promise Aidan Giddings next weekend have you come to a decision about what's likely to run yet? At the calls, the, at the most obvious one, likely ones at the moment, and like obviously nothing's written in stone, is that Cairo and uh, uh, Paddington, and uh, then the Phillies, a uh, filly, uh, Jackie O, that won her maiden here, and she was beaten in a mile and a quarter, the Nace, and if in an Oaks trial, she might run with Meditate, so, um, and there's a few others, uh, kind of could be in the wings, but they're, we think, the main ones at the moment. I meditate, I presume you feel she'll be able to leave what she did at Newmarket well behind you. Ah, yeah, we're very happy with her. Yeah, the ground was bad in Newmarket and it was her first run and she had a few little things that um, you didn't want to be punishing her first run back. But um, like I said, Newmarket ground was tough, unusual in Newmarket to have ground like that. But uh, we've been very happy with her since. Brett is very happy with her and uh, Jamie. So, um, yeah, hopefully, uh, uh, um, Gary. Look forward to that, Aidan. Thanks as ever for your time. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks, Gary. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.